is on the man and the heart. Hey guys, what's up? It's the Culture Detective here, investigating your favorite movies. <laughs> and today I'm going to do a review on The Devil All the Time. So The Devil, okay, I gotta adjust this a little bit. It's better, all right. So The Devil All the Time is a new movie released not too long ago and it is available on Netflix and it is directed by Antonio Campos and it is adapted from a novel written by Donald Ray Pollock. I think that's his name and it stars a lot of actors all the way from Tom Holland, Robert Pattinson, Noah Skarsgård to friggin uh, Sebastian Stan and uh, so many more. And um, yeah, it's it's a stacked cast. And the story is basically about this man played by Tom Holland by the name of Arvin Russell, who has a very, very treacherous life. Uh, early in the beginning, his mom died of cancer and his father committed suicide. And uh, his father uh, played by Noah Skarsgård is was a religious man and and he thought that if he could sacrifice his dog then maybe god can bring back his mom but it didn't didn't work so his dog also died and then he grew up and more and more terrible things happened around him and he had become more and more of a violent person ever since sort of fighting against the evil of the world with his own violent methods and um yeah um i don't know um i don't know if this movie is inaccessible a lot of people say that this movie is inaccessible but for me personally it's it's actually not that difficult of a watch because i've seen so many more movies that are super inaccessible but in this movie, it's it's still fairly paced. It's not that slow. But that being said, neither is it a fast-paced movie at all. It's a really slow-paced movie. It's a slow burn. And when you go into the movie, you're not really expecting a, a, a one violent scene after another. Actually, the first 40-something minutes of the movie are really, really, really slow. And... The first 45 minutes of the movie is more like a Noah Skarsgård movie than a Tom Holland movie. Because the first 45 minutes is basically Tom Holland's childhood. Uh, his character's childhood. And it mostly focuses on his dad. So, uh, yeah. The, uh, the acting is easily the best thing about this movie. Tom Holland gives, I think, his best performance in his career so far. Uh, it's amazing because his Southern, while I'm not American, neither am I Southern American, duh. But Tom Holland's Southern American accent is actually really convincing. And the fact that you can keep that accent for so many scenes very consistently is impressive given that he's actually a Brit. Similarly, we have Robert Pattinson, who's also a Brit, but his Tennessee accent uh, is actually... Um, very convincing and he also works with a very goofy voice for his character which i actually kind of appreciate i mean sure he doesn't sound like a mean menacing villain and with this voice he just sounds like a really petty crooked pedophile priest which is exactly the character he plays and he does it really well i really love it when actors try out different voices instead of just using their own uh, sure different accents is cool but different voices plus different accents is extra cool so uh yeah shout out to robert pattinson for killing it in the movie again the lighthouse tenet the king uh now this one very soon batman he's killing it and uh the acting performances of many other characters are amazing as well sebastian stan uh is amazing as the cop um it's funny because I, I'm beginning to see a pattern where uh, tragic crime movies that takes place in the in Southern America always always has that same vibe where every single male character has to act super straight like that 
movie with Chris Pine a few years ago that got nominated for Best Picture. I forgot the name of that movie. I think it's called Hell or High Water. And then that other movie, um, Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, uh, where every male character just acts super straight, walks like this, puts both elbows on the table while eating. Very, very straight stuff. And uh, it's actually a little amusing. Um, anyways, uh, amazing acting, amazing performances. There are a couple of acting performances that are not that great for a few characters, like uh, the actress for Lenora. Her uh, southern accent isn't really all that consistent. I don't know why. Um, the music for the movie is meh, it's mediocre. The cinematography, while um, it has that Oscar bait sort of um, wide shot, calm and collected cinematography, it doesn't necessarily shock me or anything, neither is it bad or anything, it's just okay. And we also have narration in the movie, uh, narrated by David Roy Pollock, the writer of the novel himself. And it's uh, it's a little inconsistent. The narrator shows up from time to time in the movie, but in the middle section of the movie, the narrator's just gone. He's just gone for the most part. But at the end and in the beginning, he's sort of there. It's a little inconsistent and it sort of throws me off sometimes. Um, but I don't think it's it's annoying or anything. I just think it it could have been more consistent with how frequently the narrator pops up out of nowhere. Um, but um, I think another thing that I enjoy about this movie is just the uh, story. Now, it's not the most interesting story ever, nor is it the most shocking story ever. Um, it's basically a, a tragedy story uh, with a so-so ending, a kind of ending that that wouldn't necessarily make you go, wow, what's going to happen next? But it's neither the kind of bittersweet ending. It's just a, an all right ending where everything seems to be all right. Um, but I think overall, generally, this story is actually really, really tragic, especially for Lenora's character, which I will not spoil, but goddamn, this is even more tragic than, than some of the most tragic Shakespearean. I also kind of appreciate I also kind of like, I also kind of appreciate the fact that the concepts of moral ambiguity and religion is being tackled in the story and that sometimes even when the good guy is trying to, you know, destroy the bad guy, the good guy also becomes the bad guy. Uh, but I must say the um, concept of moral ambiguity isn't really all that well explored in this movie because at the end of the day, we are still rooting for Tom Holland's character until the end of day. Uh, and then we also have the religious element of the story, which is sort of um, in the first half of the movie. In the second half, it, it doesn't matter anymore. But in the first half, we see Arvin's father is a religious person and has done some crazy things because he's religious. And we have Lenor uh, Lenora's father, who had also done some crazy things delusional things because of religion and then we have the preacher the crooked preacher who pretends to be very knowledged uh in in the realms of christianity but actually it's just a crooked priest who, who is greedy and is a pedophile and um yeah yeah um i i i like that i like that element i like that element quite a bit um, but still, I think at the end of the day, this story works better as a book than as a movie because in a movie, it needs narrative focus. But um, in a book, you don't necessarily need to do that because nobody can finish a single novel in one sitting. So in the movie, a good first chunk of the movie is about Arvin's dad and then we have one section and then another section and there are also many characters in this movie as well. This Carl person who is a serial killer who likes to film someone have sex with his wife and make pornography out of it and then kill that person. Uh, there's this side storyline and this wife, Sandy, uh, her brother is Sebastian Stan's character, who is a cop. 
and uh, there's that storyline where uh, his character is sort of um, he tries to get promoted but because he's doing dirty work as well and he's working under a very evil person so he's sort of in a sticky situation himself as well so we have that to talk about and then we have Lenora's character who has things going on in her side as well and a good part of the movie is also about Lenora's mom how tragic his life also was so uh, it's it's kind of complex but it's not that hard to follow in my opinion so um, yeah overall I love the acting I think the story has a great idea has some great concepts uh, however this movie doesn't necessarily blow me away or anything it's not that groundbreaking or anything and I wish the movie is slightly more focused so uh, yeah I, I think this movie is just okay. I'm saying The Devil All the Time is a movie worth watching and I'm giving it a strong 7 out of 10. So have you watched The Devil All the Time from 1 to 10? How much did you rate it, like if you like it, hate if you hate it, and subscribe if you want more. And thanks for watching. That's a terrible Southern American accent. Um, and... Um, I'm going to review a very special movie for my 1100th video, so yeah.